In this chapter of the video series, I'm going to describe some strategies for advanced exception handling and for testing your code. And I'm going to start in this video with the assert command. Assert is a way of testing a condition in your code. For example, let's say you're going to pass a value into a method, and you wanted to make sure that that value matched a certain condition before you passed it in. You could assert that condition. You create the assert command and then place the condition after it. And if the assert is false, it'll throw an exception. You can't depend on asserts for real functionality in your application. They're only for testing when you're coding. And that's because asserts can be disabled. In fact, they only work when you add a certain command line value after the call to the virtual machine. I'll show you how to use asserts in this project using asserts. And this code is a version of a calculator application that I created in Java Essential Training. This version of the calculator looks a little bit different than the older version. First of all, all the classes have been moved into a package, whereas in the earlier version, they were all in the default or the root folder of the project. And also, in the old version of the application, I was using numeric values because in Java 6, I had to do that in a switch. Now that I'm in Java 7, I'll be evaluating these values for the actual strings, the plus operator for adding values, the dash or minus for subtracting, and so on. But this application right now is very fragile. It's very easy to break it. I'll run the application, then I'll click into the console and enter values that are being requested. I'll type a 5, for example, and press return or enter, then a 2, but now, let's say that I type in a value that's not in the list of operators. I get back a good error message because the switch statement is supporting that condition. But now let's do something a little more insidious. I'll run the application again. And this time, I won't enter a numeric value. I'll just type in an alphabetical value. And the application keeps on running because it doesn't know yet that I've made a mistake. And then I'll type in a correct operator and now my application explodes. And that's because I passed in a value that couldn't be parsed as a number. I'd love to know before I get to that operation that I've got a problem. And I'm going to use an assert to do it. I'll get out of that condition. I'll press Control F2 to terminate the application. And then I'll come back to the Java perspective and my code. Here's how an assert works. First, you must add the command line parameter to the virtual machine. I'll go up to my Debug button, and I'll pull down the list of available configurations, and then I'll select Debug Configurations. I'm going to use the same Java application configuration that I already have. I'll click into the Arguments tab, and then into the VM Arguments panel, and I'll type in the argument dash EA. That's the argument that says Support Asserts. Then I'll close. I'll save my changes. And then, just to show how an assert works, I'm going to type the word assert as the first command of the application and pass the value false. Notice that assert is a keyword or a command. It's not a method. And so you don't wrap that in parentheses. I'll save. If I see the hot code replace failed dialog, I'll terminate. And then I'll try to run the application. I'm pressing F11. If you're working on Mac, Make sure you press the correct keyboard shortcut for debugging. And I immediately see a debug error. I'll click Yes to open the debug perspective, and I see that my code has stopped at the assert command. And up here, I see that the exception that's been generated is the assertion error. So I'll terminate the application, go back to the Java perspective, and this time I'll change the assert to a value of true. I'll run the application, and now the application's running correctly. An assert throws an exception when the expression returns false. So once you know that, it gets pretty easy to write your own asserts. I'd like to make sure that these strings, S1 and S2, are numeric before I get to the point of passing them into any of the math helper class's values. So I'm going to add a new static method down at the bottom of the class. I'll create a new private static boolean method. I'll call it check input, and I'll set it up to receive a string argument named s. Within the method, I'll use a try catch block. Inside the try method, I'll use integer.parseInt. 
The parsent method returns a value, but I'm not interested in the return. I'm only interested in knowing whether this is going to work, and I'll pass in the S argument. If I correctly execute that command without throwing an exception, I'll return true. That means I was able to successfully parse this string and turn it into an int. Now I'll go down to my catch section. I'll remove the to-do comment, and here I'll return false. So the logic of my check input method is simply, if I can parse the string as an integer, everything's okay. If I can't, then I return false to say it didn't work. Now I'll come back up here. I'll place my cursor after the first get input that collects a string from the user. And I'll call assert, then I'll pass in check input and S1. Then I'll do the same thing for the second string. And I'll change the argument I'm passing to S2. I'll make sure that I've terminated my previous running of the application. I'll run the application again. And this time, once again, I'll type in a non-numeric value. And when I press enter or return, I immediately get an exception. I'll click yes. And I'm told once again that I have an assertion error. You can use asserts in your application wherever you want to check in condition. Typically, you simply allow an assertion to throw a fatal exception, as it's doing here. That allows you as the developer to debug and detect the condition that could kill your application at runtime. Once again, these asserts only work if you've added the command line argument dash EA to the virtual machine. But they're invaluable for detecting these conditions while you're coding.